Once upon a time, in a large forest, there lived a very furry bunny. He had one lop ear, a tiny black nose, and unusually shiny eyes. His name was Barrington. In a way, winter is fun for bunnies. After all, it gives them an opportunity to hop in the snow and then turn around to see where they have hopped. So, in a way, winter was fun for Barrington. But in another way, winter made Barrington sad. For you see, winter marked the time when all of the animal families got together in their cozy homes to celebrate Christmas. He could hop, and he was very furry. But as far as Barrington knew, he was the only bunny in the forest. Bunnies can hop, and they're very warm, too, because of how furry they are. But he didn't really know whether or not this was true of all bunnies, since he had never met another bunny. When it got too dark to see the tracks he was making, Barrington made up his mind to go home. On his way, however, he passed a large oak tree. High in the branches, there was a great deal of excited chattering going on. Barrington looked up. It was a squirrel family. What a marvelous time they seem to be having. Having a Christmas party? Oh, yes. It's Christmas Eve. Everybody's having a Christmas party. May I come to your party? Are you a squirrel? No. What are you, then? A bunny. A bunny? Yes. Well, how can you come to the party if you're a bunny? Bunnies can't climb trees. That's true, but I can hop, and I'm very furry and warm. We're sorry. We don't know anything about hopping and being furry. But we do know that in order to come to our house, you have to be able to climb trees. Oh, well, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. And the unfortunate bunny hopped off toward his tiny house. It was beginning to snow when Barrington reached the river. Near the river bank was a wonderfully constructed house of sticks and mud. Inside there was singing. Oh, it's the beavers. Maybe they'll let me come to their party. Hello? Who's out there? Barrington Bunny. Hello, Barrington. May I come to your party? I suppose so. Do you know how to swim? No, but, but I can hop, and I'm very furry and warm. Well, I'm sorry I don't know anything about hopping and being furry, but I do know that in order to come to our house, you have to be able to swim. Oh. Well, I, I suppose that's true. <sighs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas! Even being as furry as he was, Barrington was beginning to get cold, and the snow was falling so hard that his tiny bunny eyes could scarcely see what was ahead of him. He was almost home, however, when he heard the excited squeaking of field mice beneath the ground. Oh, it's a party. Hello, field mice. This, this is Barrington Bunny. May I come to your party? But the wind was howling so loudly and Barrington was sobbing so much that no one heard him. Bunnies aren't good to anyone. What good is it to be furry and to be able to hop if you don't have any family on Christmas Eve? Suddenly, Barrington was aware that he was not alone. To his surprise, he saw a great silver wolf. The wolf was large and strong, and his eyes flashed fire. He was the most beautiful animal Barrington had ever seen. Barrington, why are you sitting in the snow? Because it's, it's Christmas Eve, and I don't have a family, and bunnies aren't good to anyone. Bunnies are too good. Bunnies can hop, and they are very warm. Oh, what good is that? It is very good indeed, because it is a gift that bunnies are given, a free gift with no strings attached. And any gift that is given to anyone is given for a reason. Someday you'll see why it is good to hop and be warm and furry. But, but it's Christmas and I'm all alone. I don't have any family at all. Of course you do. All of the animals in the forest are your family. All of the animals in the forest are my family. Oh, it's good to be a bunny. Bunnies can hop. That's a gift. A gift. A free gift. On into the night, Barrington worked. 
First, he found the best stick that he could. That was difficult because of the snow. Then hop, hop, hippity hop, to the beaver's house. He left the stick just outside the door. Then Barrington dug and dug. Soon he had gathered together enough dead leaves and grass to make the squirrel's nest warmer. He laid the grass and leaves just under the large oak tree. It was late when Barrington finally started home, and what made things worse was that he knew a blizzard was beginning. Soon poor Barrington was lost. It certainly is cold. It's a good thing I'm so furry. But if I don't find my way home pretty soon, even I might freeze. Squeak, squeak. Hello, little mouse. Oh, don't cry. I'll be right there. I'm lost. I'll never find my way home. And I know I'm going to freeze. No, 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 you won't freeze. I'm a bunny, and bunnies are very furry and warm. Now you stay right where you are, and I'll cover you up. Barrington lay on top of the little mouse and hugged him tight. The tiny little fellow felt himself surrounded by warm fur. He cried for a while, but soon, snug and warm, he fell asleep. Barrington had only two thoughts that long, cold night. It's so good to be a bunny. Bunnies are very furry and warm. And then, when he felt the heart of the tiny mouse beneath him beating regularly, he thought, All of the animals in the forest are my family. Next morning, the field mice found their little boy asleep in the snow, warm and snug beneath the furry carcass of a dead bunny. Their relief and excitement was so great that they didn't even think to question where the bunny had come from. And as for the beavers and the squirrels, they still wonder which member of their family left the little gifts for them that Christmas Eve. And no one anywhere in the forest noticed the great silver wolf who came to stand beside that brown, lop-eared carcass. But the wolf did come and stood there without moving or saying a word all Christmas Day until it was night and then he disappeared into the forest. <laughs>